soup. Baby, don't you know it? One mistake that Empire players, myself included, can sometimes make is that I think we tend to think of the Empire as less cosmopolitan than it actually is. In previous editions of Warhammer, the Empire army was fully capable of feeling allied dwarf mercenaries and even dedicated halfling allies as part of the wider Imperial army. It is a well-established idea in the lore that the Imperial army might in theory be quite diverse, depending on where you are. Places like Altdorf and Null would have large populations of non-humans, and of course many other humans from other parts of the Old World, and many of these would totally be willing to serve in battle. The Halflings of the Moot are definitely among the more unusual allies that you might find, and certainly amongst the first people to weaponize food, as they have. The Halfling Hotpot is one of the most curious weapons that you would use to be able to field in an Empire army. In the 4th edition, the Halfling Hotpot was part of an army list, and you could field it as a special artillery weapon. As it stands, it consists of nothing more than a pot of boiling liquid, usually some kind of corrosive soup, if the description is to be believed, that is hurled into the enemy lines. Uh, the way things worked back then was that you had to guess the range of your shot from the war machine to the target, and then you had to roll some scatter and artillery dice to determine if the shot actually went astray or if anything went wrong with the war machine. For the hot pot, if you rolled a misfire on the artillery dice, well, then you had to roll another d6. Those were the days of templates too and you could use the template to determine what actually got hit by the weapon shot. If the weapon misfired, on a 1 to 2, the catapult will explode in a shower of goop. On a 3 to 4, there's a big spill which will kill a crewman and also render the weapon inoperable for two turns. On a 5 to 6, the weapon simply doesn't fire due to some minor technical issue, but there are no injuries, at least. I think there's two interesting aspects to this weapon. Anyone who gets hit under the template's hole, that person suffers a strength 5 hit. This represents them being literally brained by the cauldron itself, which I assure you would not be a uh, small wound. Uh, the rest, however, will suffer a strength 3 hit from the soup. What's crazy about this is that you don't get a saving throw. Such is the toxic nature of the brew that your armor cannot save you if you're wounded by the soup, which I think makes a lot of sense. It's not like plate armor is going to stop something that's corrosive or toxic. The crazier version of this, I think, would be something like the Hoffling steam tank, or should I say soup tank. Uh, this thing was used in a battle report in, I think, White Dwarf 314, uh, which was during the 7th edition of Warhammer Fantasy. That battle, which was played by none other than Matt Ward, was fought between the Empire, representing Averland, and a force of ogres and halflings, representing a sort of halfling rebellion against Averland. If you guys would like me to, I can do a, a history video about the conflict between the halflings of the Moot and, of course, Averland. The steam tank Kathleen was originally built by Chad Mirzwa. Uh, there is also a version that I quite like, Bolt Out of Lego, by Jan Slavinger, which I can show here. And I think really captures the essence of the model. You can see that the tank is basically a carriage for a giant pot of toxic soup. The barrel at the front expels the soup like a soup flamethrower. It's a very interesting idea, basically expanding upon the hot pot into a much more deadly form. Although, how the Hofflings were able to acquire such a thing, let alone maintain it, is of course beyond me. I think the implication here is that this is some kind of prototype steam tank or something that was otherwise discarded by the College of Engineers and maybe somehow worked its way into the moot. Certainly it's too small for a person, so perhaps that's how the Hofflings got it. Either way, I think weapons like these harken back to a different era in Warhammer history, and I think they serve as a reminder that maybe the ladle is mightier than the sword. <laughs>